This is section 31 of Mark Twain's Speeches by Mark Twain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Municipal Government by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. Address at the Annual Dinner of the St. Nicholas Society, New York, December 6, 1900. Dr. McKay, in his response to the toast, St. Nicholas, referred to Mr. Clemens, saying, Mark Twain is as true a preacher of true righteousness as any bishop, priest, or minister of any church today, because he moves men to forget their faults by cheerful well-doing, instead of making them sour and morbid by everlastingly bending their attention to the seamy and sober side of life. Mr. Chairman and Gentlemen of the St. Nicholas Society, these are indeed prosperous days for me. Night before last, in a speech, the bishop of the Diocese of New York complimented me for my contribution to theology, and tonight the Reverend Dr. McKay has elected me to the ministry. I thanked Bishop Potter then for his compliment, and I thank Dr. McKay now for that promotion. I think that both have discerned in me what I long ago discerned, but what I was afraid the world would never learn to recognize. In this absence of nine years I find a great improvement in the city of New York. I am glad to speak on that as a toast. The city of New York. Some say it has improved because I have been away. Others, and I agree with them, say it has improved because I have come back. We must judge of a city as of a man, by its external appearances and by its inward character. In externals, the foreigner coming to these shores is more impressed at first by our skyscrapers. They are new to him. He has not done anything of the sort since he built the Tower of Babel. The foreigner is shocked by them. In the daylight they are ugly. They are, well, too chimneyfied and too snaggy, like a mouth that needs attention from a dentist, uh, like a cemetery that is all monuments and no gravestones. But at night, seen from the river, where they are columns towering against the sky, all sparkling with light, they are fairy-like. They are beauty more satisfactory to the soul and more enchanting than anything that man has dreamed of since the Arabian Nights. We can't always have the beautiful aspect of things. Let us make the most of our sights that are beautiful and let the others go. When your foreigner makes disagreeable comments on New York by daylight, float him down the river at night. What has made these skyscrapers possible is the elevator, the cigar box which the European calls a lift needs but to be compared with our elevators to be appreciated. The lift stops to reflect between floors. That is all right in a hearse, but not in elevators. The American elevator acts like the man's patent purge. It worked. As the inventor said, this purge doesn't waste any time fooling around. It attends strictly to business. That New Yorkers have the cleanest, quickest, and most admirable system of street railways in the world has been forced upon you by the abnormal appreciation you have of your hackman. We ought always to be grateful to him for that service. Nobody else would have brought such a system into existence for us. We ought to build him a monument. We owe him one as much as we owe one to anybody. Let it be a tall one. Nothing permanent, of course. Build it of plaster, say. Then gaze at it and realize how grateful we are, for the time being, and then pull it down and throw it on the ash heap. That's the way to honor your public heroes. As to our streets, I find them cleaner than they used to be. 
i miss those dear old landmarks the symmetrical mountain ranges of dust and dirt that used to be piled up along the streets for the wind and rain to tear down at their pleasure yes new york is cleaner than bombay i realize that i have been in bombay that i now am in new york that it is not my duty to flatter bombay but rather to flatter new york compared with the wretched attempts of london to light that city new york may fairly be said to be a well-lighted city why london's attempt at good lighting is almost as bad as london's attempt at rapid transit there is just one good system of rapid transit in london the tube and that of course had been put in by americans perhaps after a while those americans will come back and give new york also a good underground system perhaps they have already begun i have been so busy since i came back that i haven't had time as yet to go down cellar but it is by the laws of the city it is by the manners of the city it is by the ideals of the city it is by the customs of the city and by the municipal government which all these elements correct support and foster by which the foreigner judges the city it is by these that he realizes that new york may indeed hold her head high among the cities of the world it is by these standards that he knows whether to class the city higher or lower than the other municipalities of the world gentlemen you have the best municipal government in the world the purest and the most fragrant the very angels envy you and wish they could establish a government like it in heaven you got it by a noble fidelity to civic duty you got it by stern and ever watchful exertion of the great powers with which you are charged by the rights which were handed down to you by your forefathers by your manly refusal to let base men invade the high places of your government and by instant retaliation when any public officer has insulted you in the city's name by swerving in the slightest from the upright and full performance of his duty it is you who have made this city the envy of the cities of the world god will bless you for it god will bless you for it why when you approach the final resting place the angels of heaven will gather at the gates and cry out here they come show them to the archangel's box and turn the limelight on them end of municipal government by mark twain read by john greenman